These are the solutions to your inequalities review. Use a grading pen to go over this and make sure you emphasize anything that you missed so that you can study it before the test. All right, number one, would an open circle or closed circle be used in the graph of the inequality k is greater than or equal to 148? Explain. Um, because we have the greater than or equal symbol, um, we would use a closed circle, and the reason is because 148 is a solution to the inequality. If it said k is just greater than, you would use an open circle because 148 would not be a solution to the inequality. Second one, do x is greater than or equal to negative 11 and negative 11 is greater than or equal to x represent the same inequality? Um, those do not. The first one shows that x is larger, so if we draw a number line here, Here's negative 11. So the first inequality would be graphed with a closed circle going to the right. The second one says that negative 11 is greater than or equal to x. So this one would be graphed with the ray going to the left. So those are not the same inequality. Number three, write an inequality that is solved using the division property of inequality where the inequality symbol needs to be reversed. Um, Any time we multiply or divide by a negative, that's when we're going to flip the inequality symbol. Um, so we know that at some point we need to multiply or divide by a negative to fulfill that requirement. Um, for this one, the division property of an Inequality just says that if you divide both sides by the same thing, then your inequality will still have the same value as before. So for example, um, the inequality negative 5x is greater than 10. Right now, this is a multiplication in inequality. Um, and to solve it, we need to divide by negative 5 on each side. So in green, that's showing the division property of inequality. Okay, and then 10 divided by negative 5 is negative 2, and this is where the inequality will be reversed. Okay, now we graph it. So that would be an open circle with the ray going to the left. Okay, number four, similar idea, except this time we need to solve using the multiplication property of inequality. So this time I might do x divided by negative 3 is less than or equal to 7. So the multiplication property of inequality says you can multiply by the same thing on each side. So we're going to multiply by negative 3. That will cancel out. So we get x negative 21 and then your inequality symbol reverses. Okay, your graph, negative 21, negative 22. That would be a closed circle with the ray going to the right. All right, um, the difference between discrete and continuous graphs um, or examples would be that discrete situations only include certain numbers, whereas continuous situations will include all of the numbers. So discrete, you're going to use dots on your graph. Um, that would look like this, where you just have the individual dots on your numbers. Um, that's going to go with discrete. Continuous is when we show all the values by using array with an arrow on the end. Okay, um, anything that can be split up would be um, continuous. So if you could have fractions of it or parts of it, it would be continuous. If you cannot split it up, that would be discrete. So the two examples I used, um, people would be discrete. You can't have parts of a person. And time would be continuous because you can have fractions or parts of an hour or a minute or a second. All right, number six. Um, 
closed dots are used to graph inequalities because a closed dot shows that the solution is included in the solution set. Okay, so if you have a graph, whether it's discrete or continuous, a closed dot says that whatever this number is right here, that that is included in the solution set. If you use an open dot, it means it's the next smallest number, and it could be, um, you know, if it was 10 right here, it could be 10.000001 if you used an open dot, but not 10. All right, now we have some practice just solving and graphing. So number seven, we're going to add six to each side. So we get y is greater than or equal to 15. And that would be a closed circle with the ray going to the right. Okay, eight is also a one step. Don't let the fractions throw you off. Works the same way. We're just going to subtract five sevenths from each side. So here's your zero pair. One's positive and one's negative. One seventh minus five sevenths is negative four sevenths. And we could rewrite that as d is less than negative four sevenths. Okay, so that's an open circle with the ray going to the left. Okay, number nine, we're going to use the multiplication property of inequality and multiply by four on each side. So we get b is less than or equal to negative 40. Oh, not 1440. Okay, that would be a closed circle with the ray going to the left. Okay, number 10, two-step solving. So start by subtracting 9. We get 6b is greater than or equal to 24. Divide by 6, b is greater than or equal to 4. So closed circle, ray going to the right. Okay, number 11, we need to subtract 21 from each side. So negative 7b is greater than or equal to 7. Divide by negative 7. It's going to reverse the inequality, and we get b is less than or equal to negative 1. So closed circle going to the left. Okay, number 12, subtract 25 from each side. So we get 10 is greater than or equal to negative 2.5b. Divide by negative 2.5. So the inequality reverses. Okay, now we're going to do 10 divided by 2.5, and I'll put the negative on at the end. Um, remember, we can multiply by 10, multiply by 10, so we're really going to do 100 divided by 25, which is 4. So 4 is less than or equal to b. 3, 4, 5. Close circle, the ray going to the left. All right, number 13, um, zero pair would be to subtract 4 because that's a positive 4, so negative 4 is going to cancel that out. Um, so we get negative, don't forget the negative symbol, negative m divided by 6 is less than or equal to 5. And now we need to multiply by negative 6 on each side. So we get 1m is greater than or equal to to negative 30. That would be a closed circle with the ray going to the right. All right, number 14, we need to distribute. So this means 7 times g, and then 7 times negative 7, so minus 
49, or plus negative 49. It means the exact same thing, okay, is less than or equal to 21. So now we're going to add 49 to each side. Here's your zero pair, so we get 7g is less than or equal to 70, and after dividing by 7, g is less than or equal to 10. Close circle, ray goes to the left. All right, number 15, write the inequality. This one, um, we know we're going to be looking at 9, so x is greater than or equal because we have a closed circle and it's emphasizing all the numbers bigger than x. Number 6, we're going to have x is less than 6 because it's an open circle emphasizing all the numbers smaller than x. All right, number 17, we're going to translate the word statement into an inequality. So we have 3 times a number is at least, and at least means it could be larger than negative 27. It can't be smaller than negative 27. It could be exactly negative 27. So greater than or equal to negative 27, and then we're going to solve it. Divide by 3, we get n is greater than or equal to negative 9. So closed circle, ray goes to the right. Okay, next, um, write and solve an inequality. The perimeter is less than 16 feet. So the perimeter of this triangle, I'm going to add up the three sides. So 4 plus 4 plus x, that's the perimeter, is less than 16 feet. So 4 plus 4 is 8. We get 8 plus x is less than 16. Subtract 8 from each side x is less than 8, and since we're talking about feet, we need to put units on that. So x could be anything smaller than 8 feet, 4 feet, 5 feet, 6 feet, um, 7.8 feet, not exactly 8 feet, but anything less than 8 feet. All right, now we get to the word problems. Um, number 19, you earn $5.50 per hour. Write and solve an inequality that represents the number of hours. That's what we're looking for. You need to work in order to buy a digital camera for $121. So we can say N or H. Let's do H. H is number of hours. Okay, if we make $5.50 per hour, every hour we work, we're going to get $5.50. So we're going to multiply the number of hours by $5.50. Okay, we need to get at least $121. So we could get more than or equal to $121. All right, one step inequality. We're going to divide by 5.5 on each side. Okay, and then we're going to do long division, 121 divided by 5.5, multiply by 10, multiply by 10, so 1,210 divided by 55. 55 will go into 121 twice. And 55 will go into 110 twice again. So H is greater than or equal to 22 hours. Um, if we need to interpret that, we could say you must work at least 22 hours. Okay, next, Archie's Arcade charges $2.50 admission and $0.50 cents per token. Um, write and solve an inequality that represents the number of tokens. That's what we're looking for. There's our variable. You can buy with $10. So we can do T for number of 
tokens. Okay, it's 50 cents per token. So that would be 50 cents multiplied by the number of tokens plus your 250 admission. Um, you only have $10, so it has to be less than or equal to 10. Okay, we're going to subtract 250 from each side. Make sure you line up your decimal point. Okay, so 50 cents times the number of tokens is less than or equal to 750. So we're going to divide by 50 cents on each side. Okay, so 750 divided by 0.5. So really, we're doing 75 divided by 5. Okay, so that's going to leave us with 15 tokens. Okay, this graph would be discrete because you could not buy part of a token. You either buy it or you don't. So we're going to use separate circles instead of the race. So we could buy 15 or 14 or 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, or even 0. Um, those are all of our possible solutions. So to interpret it, um, we could say you could afford up to 15 tokens. All right, next one, your current checking account has a balance of $820. The minimum balance is $120. Write and solve an inequality that represents, keyword, the number of $20 bills you can withdraw. So we'll say B is number of $20 bills. Okay, so we have B is number of $20 bills. We want to know how many we can withdraw without going below the minimum. Um, so let's break this down. If we have $820, but we have to keep $120, that means that we are allowed to spend $700. So I'm going to label this amount you can spend. Okay, if you can spend $700 and you want to figure out how many $20 bills that is, you're just going to do 700 divided by 20. So 20 will go in three times, and 20 goes into 100 five times. So the number of $20 bills, um, you can spend up to 35 $20 bills. Okay, that's kind of level one if you're having a hard time with the word problems. Um, if you're more comfortable setting up inequalities, which you do need to be able to do this by the time we take the test. Um, so the first way was just showing where this is coming from. The way I'm going to show right now is how you need to be able to set this up um, because it says write an inequality. So we have um, $20 times the number of bills is how much we can spend. We also already have $120 in our account. So all of that together is less than or equal to $820. So we're going to subtract $120 from each side. These are the same steps we did before. It's just algebra this time. Okay, and then we already know that 700 divided by 20 is 35. So 35 $20 bills. All right, next one. You need at least 1,500 points to obtain a new high score. You get 300 points. Write and solve an inequality to find the number of levels you must be in order to obtain the new high score. So find the number of levels. So L is number of, oh, lost it, number of levels. Okay, so it's 300 points per level. So 300 times the number of levels is at least 1,500. So we're going to divide by 300 on each side. 
So levels is greater than or equal to 5, because 15 divided by 3 is 5. Okay, it says interpret, so um, you need to beat at least five levels for the new high score. All right, final one. You have Henry has $135 to spend. He wants one controller for $35 and some games for $15 each. So $35 is a one-time fee for the controller, and then it's $15 per game. So let's say G is number of games. Okay, and he only has 135, so that's less than or equal to 135. Okay, now we're going to solve it. So we get 15G is less than or equal to 100. So 100 divided by 15. Oops, line it up. Okay, and we're going to get a repeating decimal. So our mathematical solution is G is less than or equal to 6.6 .6 repeating. Um, because that is not a whole number and we can only buy whole numbers of games, when we interpret it, we could say that you can only buy six games. Even though 6.6 .6 would round up, we can only afford six games. All right, when we interpret the solution in the context of the problem, um, we would rewrite it as G is less than or equal to six games. Um, so interpreting it, we would write a statement and say, Henry can buy up to six video games. Okay, and then for our graph, since this is a discrete function, we are going to use closed circles at everything up until 6. Okay, so to answer part C, when graphing the solution set, would you use array or set of points? Um, we would answer this. We would use a set of points. because the situation is discrete. And then we can also add, you can't buy part of a video game. So that's what makes it discrete and why we would have points instead of array. All right, I hope that you did well on the review and that you fixed anything you may have missed. Study this, and good luck on the test.